And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In The Whistler. I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for The Whistler, rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. the Whistler's strange story. Package for Emily. As the gray convertible raced along the storm-darkened country road, Vivian Sedgwick leaned forward at the wheel, peered through the rain pounding against the windshield. Her arms ached from the strain of steady, relentless driving. But not once did she slacken her speed. Even as the car skidded around the curve, turned into the main highway that ran parallel to the railroad tracks, her foot remained on the accelerator, down as far as it would go. Nervously, she glanced at the clock in the dashboard. It was almost three o'clock. Four hours since she left Evergreen Lodge in Lake Arrowhead. Four long, harrowing hours. If she kept up this speed, she could reach Porter's Crossing by 3.20... And then it would be only a matter of minutes to Portertown and finally Sedgwick House. Yes, she had to be home by 3.30. And as her car raced on, Vivian found it difficult to believe that only yesterday morning she'd been a very happy young woman, busily packing for her Lake Arrowhead trip. Yes, yesterday morning there was even a song on her lips. Always You want the red shoes, Miss Vivian? Hmm? Oh, yes, and the sandals, too, please, Bessie. Lum, da, 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 dee, <laughs> you know, Miss Vivian, la, 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 that's an interesting coincidence. Hmm? Uh, the song you're humming. What? Uh, when Dr. Thorpe comes to call, seems I hear him whistling the same tune. Well, you've a good memory, Bessie. Perhaps that's why you're the best maid we've ever had at Sedgwick House. Uh, could it be that Dr. Thorpe is going away for a trip, too? <laughs> You're also the most inquisitive maid we've ever had. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Miss Vivian. Oh, hand me that robe, will you, Bessie? Uh, yes, and here it is. I do hope you're going someplace that's real, real dreamy-like. Well, I guess you can call it that. A friend of mine has a charming place at Lake Arrowhead. She asked us both up for a week. I'm glad Dr. Thorpe will be able to get away from the hospital for a spell. Goodness, the way he's been driving himself lately, not eating properly. Oh, the poor darling has been overworking. But you wait and see, Bessie. One of these days he'll be appreciated. He'll have a clinic of his own, a real clinic, the kind he keeps talking about. Well, there, that's that. Will you get my beige coat, Bessie, please? And the scarf, too, the brown one. Yes, ma'am. And Bessie? Yes, ma'am. After I leave, will you tell Miss Emily I'll be away for a week? I... I already have, Miss Vivian, last night. Oh. What did she say? She didn't say a thing. Not a thing. That's... That's not like her. Vivian! <gasps> Vivian! You'd best go to her, miss. Yes. Uh, take these things downstairs, will you, Bessie? I'll be down shortly. (laughs) 
The gaiety that filled your heart only a few moments ago is suddenly frozen. Yes, the bittersweet sound of Emily's voice can do that, can't it, Vivian? Reluctantly, you walk down the hall to her room. Emily, your stepmother, slightly older, much more beautiful than you, infinitely more dangerous. The woman who turned your father's life into a nightmare until finally he found escape by suicide. Now, the power of wealth, the Sedgwick fortune is hers. Emily can buy anything she wants, even the one thing you want most, Dr. Kenneth Thorpe. That's why you've got to get him away from Emily for just a week and make him yours. Nothing must prevent that. Nothing. Emily is sitting up in bed, reading. She looks up, even with a weak heart that almost makes for an invalid. She's a beautiful woman, isn't she, Vivian? What is it, Emily? I'm expecting my package of sedatives this morning. Will you see if the mail has come? You could have called Bessie to do that, Emily. Of course. But I assume she was rather busy getting your things together for your little uh, trip. Oh, how I envy you, darling. The mountains are delightful this time of year. And Evergreen Lodge at Lake Arrowhead. An enchanting place, really. Too bad you can't join us, Emily. I can't tell you how happy I am that the hospital finally gave Kenneth this free time. Been eavesdropping again, have you? One week up there at the lodge... With you, we'll make a different man out of Kenneth. Won't it, darling? There's no danger of what you're thinking, Emily. He'll make it. How nice. How very, very nice. Now you'll be able to discuss your dreams of the future together. Kenneth with his new clinic, and you, his noble wife. Tidying up shop. Bringing new little doctors into the world. You can't stand it, Kat. My father's out of the way. You have his house, his money. But that still isn't enough for your empty little life, is it? Darling, your fangs are showing. Whenever I'm near you, Emily, I like to dress for the occasion. <laughs> You'd like some of that money for yourself, wouldn't you, darling? So you could buy Kenneth his dream, his clinic. And that would be one way of getting him. I don't have to win his love that way. Then what is your technique, being his sweet, adorable girl who uses all the advertised products? Emily, you know I've loved Kenneth all my life. Then I should think you've had more than your share. Now it's my turn to love him the rest of my life. Oh, dear, it's probably that hard Mrs. Fenway. She said she's all... Hello? Hello? Well, hello. We were just this minute talking about you, Kenneth, darling. I'll take it, Emily. <laughs> I was so delighted to hear about your little vacation. Oh, you'll love it up there. Is uh, Vivian there? Hmm? I said I'll take it, Emily. Oh, yes. Yes, she's here, Kenneth, just a moment. He wants to talk to you, Vivian. Thank you. Hello, Kenneth. Vivian, I had to call you right away. The most wonderful thing has happened. Oh, what, Ken? Well, it's just unbelievable. I can't go into too much detail now, but the clinic, Vivian. I'm getting my clinic. The clinic? Oh, that is wonderful, Kenneth. But who? I mean, how did it happen? Well, the funny part of it is I don't know. A guardian angel, I'd say, offhand. You know how some of these millionaires are. I like to stay behind the scenes. Yes. Yes, I know. But how is it that you were chosen? Well, I haven't been. Not exactly, anyway. First off, I, I've got to submit a formal report on what I think a modern clinic should be like. Have to start on it right away. Right away? You mean the trip you... Afraid so. I'll have to cancel it, Vivian. Oh, but... But couldn't you work on the report up at the lodge? It's an ideal place, really. I could do the typing. No, no, Vivian. I'm afraid it's out of the question. I really should stay here in the event something pops suddenly. Why don't you go on ahead? Oh, Kenneth, you promised. You promised nothing would interfere with this vacation. Yes, I know, but... Vivian, I can't risk the chance of a lifetime for a week in the mountains. No, of course. Of course, I'm sorry, Kenneth. Look, I, I've got to run along now. I'll call you at the lodge in a day or so, huh? Yes. Yes, do that, Kenneth. Bye. Ken... Our little vacation's been spoiled, hasn't it, darling? 
Your grief overwhelms me, Emily. Now, darling. I'm even more overwhelmed by your split-second timing. What in the world are you talking about? You honestly think you have a chance, don't you? You think you can get him away from me by buying him his clinic. If Kenneth has been given a clinic of his own, this is the first I've heard of it. It's a clever device, Emily. Keeping your magnanimous gift a secret. Oh, yes, let him be grateful first. Blindly grateful. And then at the right psychological moment, tell him he owes it all to you. Really, Vivian, aren't you... You don't deny it, do you, Emily? Kenneth is a very desirable specimen of American manhood, darling. Think if I made up my mind, I might do anything to have him for myself. Listen, Emily. You've taken everything from me. But you won't take him. I'm warning you. For all your charms, all your subtleties... You'll never get him away from me, do you understand? Never. Back in your own room, you stand by the window, trembling with rage. The fury inside you, your hatred for Emily, mounts steadily. And then a figure at the front gate attracts your eye. The postman. And you watch him drop a small package into the box. Yes, Vivian... It's the package Emily is expecting. The harmless sedatives mailed from a chemical laboratory in the city. Suddenly your heart skips a beat. You stand there, staring out across the grounds, and a plan begins to form in your mind. Quickly you turn and run from the room. Moments later you're in the downstairs hall, hastily throwing a raincoat over your shoulders. You open the front door and go to the mailbox. Yes, there it is. With a package safely hidden in your coat pocket, you return to the house. Miss Vivian? Oh, Bessie. I was just about to go out for the mail. I, I already have it. Was there something for Miss Emily? No, just a letter for me. But didn't Miss Emily's package of sedatives arrive? No. Miss Emily's package didn't arrive. And now back to the whistler. decision, haven't you, Vivian? In a split second, it all occurred to you. The moment you saw the mailman drop the package into the mailbox, the package of harmless sedatives for Emily, you knew you had to kill her. As you climb the long, narrow stairs to the turret, high above the rest of the house, to your father's den, you're certain it's the only way you can prevent Emily taking Kenneth Thorpe away from you. Inside the small room, you hurry to the desk, unlock it. And from the far corner of the lower drawer, you remove a small bottle labeled poison. You unscrew the top. A small white pill rolls out into your palm. One of the pills your father bought the night he killed himself. For a moment, you stare at it. Wonder why you've saved it. Wonder if perhaps you've saved it for yourself. Or because someday you knew you'd give it to Emily. (gasps) Who is it? Bessie, Miss Vivian. Oh, come in, Bessie. I was just wondering, will you be going up to Evergreen Lodge after all? Miss Emily seemed to think you'd changed your mind. Of course I'm going. I haven't changed my plans in the least. Not in the least. The moment Bessie leaves, your hands move swiftly, surely... Unwrapping Emily's package, removing the bottle of sedatives. In a matter of minutes, you've emptied the contents of one of the sedative capsules at the top of the box and refilled it with the same deadly ingredients that took your father's life years before. You know the nature of the poison, that it doesn't lose its strength, and you feel strangely exultant 
as you think of Emily going in the very same way. And it's going to be simple, isn't it? Only a matter of rewrapping the package, applying the same address label after you've steamed it off the original package, and then remailing it. Yes, Vivian, the postmark, everything must be the same. Emily's package must arrive in perfect condition. Vivian, you're leaving now? Yes, Bessie. Have a pleasant time at Arrowhead. Oh, I will. I'm sure. Uh, Bessie. Yes, sir? Say goodbye to Miss Emily for me. An hour later, as you reach Los Angeles and drive toward the chemical laboratory that sent Emily's prescription. The freshly wrapped package with the laboratory's label on it is on the seat beside you. You park the car, enter the establishment unnoticed, and drop Emily's package into the mail chute. And that's all. The Los Angeles postmark will be on it now. Everything perfect. By late tomorrow afternoon, the package will be in Emily's hands. Now you can forget it. Put it out of your mind as you get back in the car... Drive on to Arrowhead. Vivian, darling! I was about to give you up. So glad you could make it, dear. Well, the roads were rather bad. I had to drive slowly. Oh, I thought you might have got mixed up, taking the road that led back through the city. No. No, Florence, I came directly here. Here, let me take your bag. Oh, you're alone? I thought your nice doctor friend was coming. Oh, he couldn't get away. Oh, too bad. Well, bear up. There'll be a big gang over tomorrow. I promise you won't be lonely. Um, how's Emily? Why, she's fine, Florence. Hmm, I know. Sorry I asked. Look, darling, while you're here, you just forget about her, understand? Promise? Oh, I wish I could, Florence, but I... Just do it, that's all. Now I'll show you your room. Upstairs, darling. Goodness, I'll bet you're dead tired. Yes, I... I am. The driving all afternoon. I'd like to rest a while. Of course, darling. And that before dinner and you'll be as fresh as a daisy. I just made that up. <laughs> Come along. Vivian! Vivian! Come in, Florence. Dinner be ready in about... Well, what in the world are you doing sitting here in the dark? Thought you were going to take a nap. Well, I... I just couldn't seem to quiet down. Vivian, is something wrong? Of course not. Dinner will be ready in about 20 minutes. Will you be down? Yes. Yes, I'll be down. Would you believe it, Vivian? Right in our own mad little group. His wife didn't know a thing about it. Of course, I'm so suspicious by nature, I should have caught on at once. Why, she... Well, what's the matter, darling? I... I'm sorry, Florence. But you'll have to excuse me. But, darling, your dinner... You haven't even touched a thing. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling very well. I'll be all right in the morning, though. I'll see you then. Well, whatever you say, Vivian... mornings to have bad weather. I'm sure no one will want to come over. It does look like a storm. Vivian, what is the matter with you? Florence, I... I shouldn't have left Emily. Oh, so that's it. You've had another spat. I should go back right now. Nonsense. You stay right here. That's the trouble with you, Vivian. You're always running back to apologize. Leave Emily alone. She'll get over it. Oh, but you don't understand, Florence. I've got to talk to Emily. Florence, I want to use the phone, may I? The phone? Oh, now, you're not going to call that dragon. Florence, please. All right, all right. You know where it is. Operator? Operator? 
operator my number? Are you trying it? I'm sorry, but that line is still busy. Would you kindly place your call later? Busy? You're sure? Porter 970 is busy, madam. Oh, very well, thank you. No luck? I can't understand why it should be busy. Oh, darling, nobody ever gets me. My line's always busy. Yes, but Emma... <laughs> I... I can't understand why today of all days her phone should be busy. I still don't see why anyone should feel obliged to apologize to Emily. I don't want to apologize, but I've got to speak to her right away. Well, all right, darling, all right. Try the number again. <sighs> oh, operator. Operator? Hello. Would you try my number again, Porter 970? The circuits to Porter Town are busy now, madam. I'm sorry. Oh, Vivian, you're working yourself up into a perfect friend. Aren't I've just got to drive back home. I've made a terrible mistake. But you can call later. No, I can't wait. Emily, Emily wasn't feeling very well when I left. And I've got to get back now. All this sudden solicitude for Emily is a bit baffling. I must say it's I... It's more than solicitude, Florence. And I've got to go. I must leave right away. Leave? But, Vivian, I don't understand. You were going to stay a I week. I know, Florence. Oh, please forgive me. Look, look, I'll be back. I'll leave my things. But now, I've got to go, Florence. I've got to hurry. Yes, Vivian. At the moment, all that's on your mind as you drive your gray convertible out onto the road is the fear that you might be too late to right the terrible wrong that you've done, to intercept Emily's package with the poison capsule. As your car races along the slippery road, the full horror of what you've done sweeps over you. You can't believe you actually planned to kill Emily, can you? It's impossible. You keep telling yourself it never happened. Yes, that's what you're thinking as your foot presses down harder on the accelerator. You're concentrating so hard you don't hear the shrill, frantic warning until just before the crash. Vivian. Vivian. It's Ken, darling. Can you hear me? Ken... Oh, Kenneth. You're all right now. There was an accident. You're at the hospital. Accident? No, no, easy. Kenneth, how... How long have I been here? You've been unconscious for 24 hours. You kept calling my name. And Emily's. The doctor sent for me. Where... Where is Emily? Now, now, darling, don't you think about Emily. Just... Kenneth, where is she? Please, please you, you mustn't excite yourself, darling. Just... Kenneth, what? what is it? Where's Emily? I... I wasn't going to tell you, but... Emily died last night. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. And now back to the Whistler. You were too late, weren't you, Vivian? Too late to stop the terrible thing you started. And now it's all over. Emily's dead. Later that afternoon, an ambulance is bringing you back to Sedgwick Manor. You think of Kenneth riding in the car ahead. Kenneth still doesn't know, does he, Vivian? He doesn't know that you were responsible for Emily's death. Yes, you've got to tell him, haven't you, about the poison capsule. And you shudder a little... Now think of the look on his face when he finds out. As he carries you up to your room and places you gently on your bed, you realize you can't delay another moment. Kenneth, 
there's something... Easy I... now, dear. Better be quiet for now. Oh, but can I... Shh, I'll do the talking. I, uh, I haven't told you. I heard from Dr. Morris last night. You remember him, don't you? Yes. Back east, isn't he? Uh-huh. He called me about the new clinic. Seems he's been giving me quite a build-up to the people sponsoring the project. What? What? They're in the east? Yes, yes, a group of Boston men. Well, Dr. Morris seemed quite certain the clinic could be mine. But I thought that Emily... What's that? Oh, Kenneth, you must listen, I... Oh, that must be my call from the coroner's office. They'll tell me the results of the autopsy. Be right back. Oh, but Ken... Oh. Oh, yes? Yes, this is Dr. Forrest. Excuse me, yes, Miss Dr. Vivian. Yes, Bessie. Uh -huh. What is it? I just wanted to know what I should do yeah, with I... this package. Pa Bessie! Where did you get that package? It just came in the afternoon mail. It's for Miss Emily. But that's the package I mailed. Well, the autopsy is just as I thought. Death by natural causes. Oh, Kenneth. I... I... Oh, thank heavens. Oh, the package came a whole day late. Package? Yes. Oh, Kenneth. That's what I was trying to tell you. I mailed this package The postman to... said he was sorry the package came a day late. But you know what? He said it was your accident, your own car running into the train yesterday, that delayed the mail. Music for The Whistler, composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch, and is the property of Herman Music Incorporated, ASCAP, Hollywood, California. Broadcast rights granted solely to Audio Arts Productions, La Mirada, California. Mm -hmm.